Hello and welcome to the Friday, December 9th, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from San Francisco, California. Rob's diary today looks, uh, well, for a difference, not the logs that you actually have, but the logs that you are missing. The incident that uh, Rob is uh, talking about is an outage in a firewall. And well, the challenge here was figuring out uh, basically how much logs are we missing? When did the outage start? When did it end? Basically, when was there no logging from that particular device? Part of the challenge was the volume of logs, of course, that you had to deal with. So what better? than to create a little script in order to identify the gap in the logs and also identify how long it lasted. Rob is going over this particular problem and then presenting the little script that he ended up using that uh, worked in this particular case to nicely identify the missed uh, time gap and also give them hints about what actually happened here. And the Google Threat Analysis team has an interesting blog post with details regarding an Internet Explorer zero day that was used in late October. In late October, due to overcrowding at an outdoor Halloween event, a large number of people were actually killed and injured. And this particular malicious uh, work document used this incident as a lure in order to trick people into opening the document, which then uh, rendered HTML. And uh, well, HTML in Office is rendered using Internet Explorer, which then triggered this at the time uh, unknown vulnerability. Google reported this vulnerability uh, to Microsoft and Microsoft fixed it pretty quickly in the November update. So more details now about the vulnerability and also about this particular malicious document and how it worked from Google's threat analysis group. And don't have the skills to write your own malware, but still want to make some money distributing malware, maybe have some interesting ideas how to trick people into installing it. Well, uh, for you, there is malware as a service. There is an interesting uh, blog post looking at uh, such a campaign by researchers from Threat Fabric. They look at infections with the Erbium uh, malware and others that uh, typically are being attached to valid applications, in particular for Android, but apparently are also being used for Windows. One website they're featuring here that was apparently used to distribute these malicious applications advertises a Wi-Fi authorization uh, software. Not really sure what that software is really supposed to do. Maybe supposed to sort of easily log you into sort of for pay uh, Wi-Fi uh, networks. But uh, what it really does here in this case is install InfoStealer malware that will typically try to go after a crypto coin accounts, but also after a regular good old fashioned bank account credentials. And Cisco patched a vulnerability in its 7,800 and 8,800 IP phones. This particular vulnerability is rated high and it affects the Cisco discovery protocol. It's a stack overflow. And what makes it so interesting is that exploits have already been discussed in public. At this point, there has been no sort of uh, actual exploitation been cited in the wild using uh, this uh, vulnerability. Also, in order to exploit the vulnerability, an attacker uh, would have to be located on the same link layer network as affected phones, which of course also uh, may make it uh, less likely for the exploits to actually be seen uh, used. At this point, there is no patch available for this vulnerability. However, there's sort of a workaround. If you're also using the link layer discovery protocol, LLDP, in addition to the Cisco discovery protocol, then you uh, may disable the Cisco discovery protocol protecting affected devices. And the open source Delo Radius project, a web-based admin interface for Radius servers, patched a critical vulnerability 
vulnerability. It's first of all a cross-site scripting vulnerability, but then also a cross-site request forgery vulnerability. Well, the combination of these vulnerabilities can lead to taking over accounts within the Radius server, which of course, given that Radius is often used for network-wide sort of authentication, is definitely a bug that you would like to patch quickly if you're using this software. Well, and then it's this time of the year again. If you haven't noticed yet, uh, the SANS Holiday Hack Challenge opened earlier this week. Uh, waiting to announce it until the weekend to not distract you so much from your day job. So have fun with that. And that's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.